In today's news, East End Community alerted attempted robbery at local business. Innovation Week 2024 begins. Residents encouraged to participate in the Cultural and Tourism Month activities. OT Minister visits the BVI. Get familiar with the ED card system. Visa free travel in effect. New labor management system is on stream. And the MOH observes Men's Safety Week 2024. Antigua and Barbuda MP found dead. We have the details of this and so much more when 284 News returns. CCT internet just got better. The best plan of service for any weather. We got fire. That's fiber. With lots of speed. Starts at 119 and has free IPTV. If you want to go home and start to stream, you should probably get Go Fast LTE. What school? Right now it's back to school. So when you sign up, we've got something for you. Sign up for Fire or Go Fast LTE. And you, my friend, get a tablet for free. I said sign up for Fire or Go Fast LTE. And you, my friend, get a tablet for free. It's back to school time with CCT. Offer valid while supplies last. CCT, life unlimited. Hi, my name is Judy, VI Motors Operations Assistant, and I'm here with Zing, our mechanic here, and we're going to show you today how you can locate your VIN number on a vehicle. Your vehicle's VIN or vehicle identification number, it's a unique code specific to your car. It's important for various purposes like registration, insurance, and maintenance. To find your VIN, start by looking at the dashboard on the driver's side. You can see it through the windshield near the bottom corner of the dashboard. It's usually a small metal plate or a sticker with a combination of 17 characters. If you can't find it there, other common locations include the driver's side door jab, engine block, or it may be mentioned in your registration documents. And that's how you find your vehicle's VIN number. Remember, this unique identifier is crucial for various services related to your car. It's a good idea to note it down or take a picture for future references. If you are having trouble locating it, please don't hesitate to ask a professional or refer to your owner's manual for guidance. Thank you for watching this quick guide on finding your vehicle's VIN. Stay tuned for more helpful tips to keep your car in top condition. Visit us at Dove's Bottom or at our Parts Point location in Virgin Gorda or call us at 494-2496 or our website at www.vimotos.com. Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of 284 News. It is Tuesday, November 5th, 2024. I'm Ron Grant, bringing you the latest out of Tortola in the Virgin Islands. A happy Tuesday is wished to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Beginning our newscast on the local scene, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force is urging East End residents and business owners to tighten security following a recent wave of burglaries in the area, particularly in the Greenland and Longlook communities. In a press release on Tuesday, November 5th, the RVIPF revealed that over the past week, more than seven incidents were reported, sparking heightened concern and increased patrols in affected areas. The break-ins target both commercial and residential properties, having prompted Acting Commissioner of Police Jacqueline Vantable to stress the importance of community cooperation and proactive measures to secure properties. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force provided a list of crime prevention tips to help residents enhance their property security, including the use of CCTV technology, securing all entry points, use of exterior lighting, and by implementing community watch networks. To support the community, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force has deployed additional patrols, they say, throughout East End, and detectives are actively investigating recent burglary cases. The police encourage residents and business owners to secure their premises and provide any relevant information to assist ongoing investigations. Anyone with information on the recent burglaries are urged to contact the Royal Virgin Isles Police Force Intelligent Unit at 368-9339 or unanimously at Crime Stoppers 800-8477. If calling from overseas, 1284-800-8477. 
Credible reports have confirmed the attempted robbery of a local business, Matches Bar and Grill, at its Fourth Hill Tortola location on Monday, November 4th. Information revealed that the incident occurred on the afternoon and involved a masked individual armed with a high-powered weapon who approached the business establishment. It was revealed that the owner of the business escaped from the gunman who then fled the property unsuccessful in his quest. Police officials reportedly arrived on the scene shortly after. Official confirmation from the Rural Virgin Islands Police Force is still pending following the incident. More to come as the story develops. The Ministry of Education, Youth Affairs and Sports Annual Innovation Week 2024 is officially underway, bringing a range of engaging activities to pre-primary students from across the territory. Under the theme, Moving Full Steam Ahead, the observation emphasizes the importance of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics in early education. On the first day, young learners enjoyed a mix of fun and educational activities designed to spark their curiosity and creativity. The event brought together students from various schools to participate in hands-on experiences that aim to foster a love for learning while building foundational STEAM skills. Here's a look at how things went down. Culture and Tourism Month 2024 is expected to highlight the rich cultural heritage of the Virgin Islands while promoting tourism as a vital component of the economy. Junior Minister for Tourism and Culture, the Honorable Luce Hodge Smith, in an official statement declaring the month open, said the month-long celebration themed, and I quote, telling your story through tourism, sharing Virgin Islands legacies, will see the intertwining of culture and tourism which are crucial for sustainable development within the Virgin Islands. She further encouraged residents to support and participate. Greetings to all. As we celebrate Culture and Tourism Month, as the Junior Minister for Culture and Tourism, I am very proud to welcome you to this special occasion that highlights the essence of who we are as Virgin Islanders. Our rich culture, vibrant heritage, and stunning natural beauty are what make the Virgin Islands a unique destination for visitors and a source of pride for us all. This month is a time to reflect on our journey, celebrate our people, and explore how we can continue to share our culture with the world through sustainable tourism. From our traditional music and festivals to our delicious cuisine and historical sites, our islands have so much to offer. Join us in this celebration under the theme, telling our story through tourism, sharing Virgin Islands legacies. As we showcase the best of the Virgin Islands, let us work together to strengthen the bond between culture and tourism for a prosperous future. Director of Culture Dr. Catherine Smith emphasized the importance of this celebration. The theme for this year's Culture and Tourism Month is telling our story through tourism, sharing Virgin Islands legacies. You can see how this leads us into a discussion of cultural tourism, which happens whenever people travel to a destination to experience its culture. This can include arts tourism, heritage tourism, or just a people's everyday culture. We know that in the Virgin Islands, we have lots of both. Certainly, we have our visual artists, whether they are producing a painting or taking photographs or any of the other visual arts. We have writers, whether they are composing poetry or writing nonfiction. 
We certainly have a performing artists. Just think of all of our musicians and bands, young and old. Reflect on our cultural dances, from our mokujumbis to the platpole dancers to the heritage dancers. We have a vibrant food culture here in the Virgin Islands. We have a number of festivals, one of the best ways to showcase arts tourism. And when it comes to heritage tourism, we have our rich legacy and history, which can be experienced through our heritage sites, museums, monuments, parks, underwater sites, and even burial grounds. Director Smith also spoke on the various activities planned for Culture Tourism Month. Now, cultural tourism is a form of tourism, and you will see in this calendar, this year's calendar, more tourism activities than have been featured in the past Culture and Tourism Months. The BVI Tourist Board will be hosting the Forbes Customer Service Training on Virgin Gorda on Tortola on the 5th and 6th of November, and will be holding the Tourism Education Summit on the 14th of November. And when it comes to arts tourism, the BVI Tourist Board will be hosting the Forbes Customer Service Training on Virgin Gorda and Tortola on the 5th and 6th of November, and will be holding the Tourism Education Summit on the 14th of November. She also spoke on the role of the BVI Tourist Board in supporting culture and tourism, which will focus on food culture. The BVI Tourist Board is no stranger to food culture or culinary tourism or gastronomy, which is the tourist exploration of food culture. Its ever popular Anigata Lobster Festival will be held between the 30th of November and the 1st of December. Now the Department of Culture will hold its popular event, the Cultural Food Fair, on the 29th of November, which is also Virgin Islands Culture Day, when we all rock our territory wear. There will also be a coconut and guava tart competition on that day. We continue the theme of arts tourism to mention two of the most dynamic festivals which are relatively new, although one has been rejuvenated. I am speaking about the BVI Lit Fest and the Funji Festival. The BVI Lit Fest is scheduled between the 7th and 10th of November, while the Funji Festival is scheduled to take place throughout the Virgin Islands between the 15th and 17th of November. These two festivals have quickly grown to amazing events and are always growing. Picking up on the theme of the visual arts, the Department of Culture and Bamboucher Lounge will be hosting an evening which will culminate with the unveiling of the mural titled The Manatee on the 23rd of November. Up next, viewers, we have much more on the local scene. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Pop the Balloon or Find a Connection. Let's meet our first contender, ladies. Okay, Joey, so do you have any toxic traits? Um, very restrictive. I don't give more time. What you get is what you get. I don't like to give unlimited time. That's it. Okay, can you tell us why you popped your balloon? That's a little too restricted for me. Thank you for coming. Okay, ladies, so let's meet our second contender. Sorry, excuse me. Um, why did you pop a balloon? I could, scam. I could give you minutes, data, unlimited car, overseas car, fiber. What else you need? My friend used to date you. You are scam. She's before everything and more. Nothing to offer. Okay, ladies, let's welcome our last contender. You look nice. Can you tell us your name? Thank you. My name is Christian Charles Thomas. Did a call me see sweetie. <laughs> what do you have to offer these ladies? Well, security, trust, unlimited time, and a pretty fast. Okay, so do you have any deal breakers? Nah, but here's my number. 444-4444. E2. Vida in Limitada. Okay, guys. So no pop balloons. For a fast, reliable, and secure connection for your personal or business life, call us at 444-4444 or visit any of our CCT stores and we'll get you connected with the perfect match for you. 
At Partners for Kids, your child's health and happiness are at the heart of everything we do. We've been the trusted medical home for children and adolescents up to 18 years old. And now, we are excited to welcome a new member to our family of healthcare professionals. Introducing Dr. Aisha Maxwell, our new family practitioner. Dr. Maxwell brings a wealth of experience and deep passion for pediatric and adult care, ready to join our team in providing first-rate health services to your family. At Partners for Kids, we believe in a collaborative approach to healthcare. With partners in occupational therapy and clinical psychology, Partners for Kids, where caring is just the beginning. Visit us at Road Reef Plaza Tortola, open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call us at 284-444-5437 or reach out at info at partnersforkids.com to learn more. Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIA. CCT FIA Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second, super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT FIA, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT Life Unlimited. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for sticking with us. The Right Honorable Stefan Doughty, the United Kingdom's Minister for State for Europe, North America, and Overseas Territories, is visiting the Virgin Islands from November 4th to the 6th, 2024. Darty's visit focuses on assessing the territory's progress in implementing governance reforms and financial transparency measures in response to the Commission of Inquiry recommendations. During his visit, Darty will hold discussions with key government leaders, including Premier Dr. The Honorable Natalia De Wheatley and Leader of the Opposition, The Honorable Ronnie W. Skelton, as well as other senior officials, public representatives, and community stakeholders. The minister's itinerary also includes a meeting with Acting Commissioner of Police Jacqueline Vantepool to discuss security issues, as well as the status of ongoing implementation, which follows the enforcement of law review. This is in an effort to evaluate the effort to address the 48 recommendations outlined by the COI. The territory has made substantial legislative strides in preparation for this review with the House of Assembly passing 15 pieces of legislation and developing eight supporting policies to improve governance as well as accountability. Residents of the Virgin Islands are being encouraged to become familiar with the new online embarkation disembarkation card system expected to fully be in effect from January 1, 2025. Mr. Ted Thomas, a senior immigration officer within the Immigration Department, shared details about the ED card system, which is part of the government's aim toward modernizing its immigration management process. The online ED card system is a digital platform that replaces traditional paper-based entry and exit forms for travelers entering the Virgin Islands. Travelers can access the form by visiting bviedcard.gov.vg. Two, the system is now in its pilot phase and will be mandatory for all travelers beginning the 1st of January, 2025. Three, travelers can complete the online ED card at least 72 hours before their scheduled arrival or departure to ensure smooth and efficient entry or exit process. Simply fill out the online application form, upload the required document, and receive confirmation for presentation upon arrival. Four, changes can be made before your arrival if needed. You can update your online ED card information by logging into your account, selecting start application, and then hitting search. The new system went live on October 1st, and by January 1st, 2025, it will become a mandatory requirement for all travelers entering the Virgin Islands. This shift marks the end of the traditional paper-based forms, replacing them with an efficient, user-friendly online platform. This transformative digital initiative, a collaboration between the Department of Immigration and His Majesty's Customs, is designed to streamline entry procedures and improve the overall travel experience for both residents as well as visitors. 
the move to digital platform aligns with the government's broader goals of incorporating innovation and technology into immigration and customs services, expediting processes, times, and improving operational efficiency. Travelers will be able to complete their embarkation and deep disembarkation sorry, forms online before arriving, significantly reducing wait times at the ports of entry. The government of the Virgin Islands has officially removed the visa requirements for Guyanese nationals entering the territory for business or tourism purposes, effective Friday, November 1st. Guyanese travelers are now able to travel to the British Virgin Islands without a visa, a significant move aimed at strengthening regional ties between the Virgin Islands and Guyana. The decision, approved by the Cabinet under Section 37 of the Immigration and Passport Act, was announced by Premier and Minister of Finance Dr. The Honorable Natalia D. Wheatley during a September 30th press conference. Premier Wheatley emphasized that the exemption enhances Caribbean unity and facilitates ease of travel, trade, tourism, and investment across the region. Guyana is currently experiencing a historic economic transformation, posting a growth rate of 62.3% in 2022 the highest in the world. This growth is being driven primarily by its burgeoning oil and gas sector, alongside a diversified economy that includes strong expansions in agriculture, mining, and construction. For the BVI, this makes Guyana a key partner for collaboration and investment. The Virgin Islands' removal of visa requirements for Guyanese travelers comes at an important time as both territories aim to foster they say, economic, cultural, and social connections. According to Premier Wheatley, allowing Guyanese nationals visa-free entry will encourage collaboration, ventures, investment potential, and cultural exchange opportunities between the two nationals. This measure, he says, aligns with the BVI's wider initiative to promote Caribbean integration and strengthen partnerships across the region. Guyana, described by Premier Wheatley as a giant in our Caribbean community, joins other regional countries with similar visa-free access to the BVI contributing to a united and interconnected Caribbean. Up next, viewers, more on the local as well as regional scene. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Attention, Anagata residents! Attention, Anagata residents! CCT is coming to you! That's right! CCT will be visiting Anagata every third Wednesday of the month. Need to pay your bill? Sign up for a new service? Or have a customer service concern? CCT has got you covered. No need to leave the island. CCT is here to make staying connected easier than ever. Mark your calendars for every third Wednesday starting October 16th and visit us for all your CCT service needs. For more information, call us at 444-4444 or follow us on any of our social media pages. See you soon, Anagata. Just give me my service. Yes! Just give me my service. Just give me my service. Make the switch to CCT and get connected today. Unlimited talk, text, and data. Visit any CCT store or call us at 444-4444. CCT, Life Unlimited. Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIRE. CCT FIRE Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second. Super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT FIRE, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT Life Unlimited. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for sticking with us. On the local scene, in an effort to promote transparency in the hiring process and boost local employment, the Department of Labor and Workforce Development mandates that all employers post available job openings in its recently implemented labor management system. Speaking at a recent District 3 job fair, Acting Labor Commissioner Marvin Hastings said the initiative aims to enhance accessibility for local job seekers across the territory while ensuring fair recruitment practices. 
He highlighted the system's benefits for Virgin Islanders. You would say, what is the benefit of signing up in the new labor management system? Well, for the first time, job seekers can now log into the system and they can see every single job opportunity that there is available in the BBI, which, which means that all of the employers that I'm looking at has to now post all jobs via the labor management system. I'm not saying don't go to hire BBI outsource, Vino, um, Beacon, Island Center, not advertised as well. But what we're saying is the requirement that all jobs are now posted on the labor management system. The online platform, he explained, will allow the department to monitor recruitment processes and ensure that qualified locals are prioritized for open positions. So what that does for our job seekers and my officers, when you do register in the system and you click that you're applying for a job through the college, we can now track and see how those interviews go, exactly how many people they interviewed, whether or not they're BV Islanders or not, and we can actually track and see why they did not hire you. So let's say, for instance, Mr. Coward is not from the BBI, and they're choosing him over Ms. Lena here. We can now tell them, I can see that Ms. Lena and Mr. Coward has the same qualifications, why didn't you hire her? Section 117 of the Labor Code, 2010 Labor Code, says that all Virgin Islanders and belongers has first right to any job in the BBI. No questions, no exceptions. You must be given first priority. Once they are equal, don't tell me that Leo has a high school degree. Leo, um, Ms. Scout, um, Lena now has a bachelor's and the job is asking for a bachelor's. Obviously, she would be given the preference. She has more um, experience. But as long as it's all things being equal, BV Islanders has first right refusal to all jobs. Hastings encouraged job seekers to register with the labor management system to access its benefits, adding that the platform centralizes employment opportunities, making it easier for locals to connect with employees. The Ministry of Health and Social Development, in partnership with the APALSA Monitoring Center and the World Health Organization, is promoting the safe use of medications as part of Meds Safe Week which is observed from November 4th to the 10th. This year's campaign theme highlights the importance of corrected medicine usage to prevent adverse effects and encourages the reporting of side effects when they do occur. Chief of Drugs and Pharmaceutical Services, Mrs. Gracia Wheatley-Smith, emphasized that, and I quote, research shows that about half of all side effects are preventable. Patient safety is our top priority, she said, during the Med Safety Week campaign. We want to remind patients to take their medications as instructed and healthcare professionals to review therapies before prescribing them. In the BVI, side effects can be reported by doctors, pharmacists, nurses, and patients through an adverse reaction reporting form. Completed, from, completed forms should be emailed to the Chief of Drugs and Pharmaceutical Services at grwheatley-smith.gov.vg where they are viewed to help safeguard local medicine users. Now, these reports are shared with regional and international regulatory agencies to enhance the overall safety profile of pharmaceuticals worldwide. She said every time you report a suspected side effect to the Office of Chief of Drugs and Pharmaceutical Services, your doctor, pharmacist, or other healthcare providers, you may help medicines safer for patients all around the world. On the regional scene, over in Antigua and Barbuda, the twin island nation of Antigua and Barbuda is today mourning following the sudden death of Assault Macau, the sitting member of Parliament for the St. Peter constituency. Michael was reportedly found dead at his home early this morning. Though the exact circumstances surrounding his death remain unclear, authorities have announced that an investigation is underway to determine the cause and circumstances of MPs passing. Michael, a prominent figure in Antigua politics, has served the people of St. Peter for several years, and his death has sent shockwaves through the community and beyond. Supporters, colleagues, and community members have expressed condolences, remembering Michael's contributions to his constituency and his dedication to the public service. Viewers, that is it for today's News Roundup. Be sure to follow us for your daily news updates at tweet4media.com and on our WhatsApp channel for daily updates. Tweet4 Media and Tweet4 BVI on Instagram and X, formerly Twitter as well as Facebook. I'm Ron Grant. Do have a safe and enjoyable evening. Goodbye.